If you have been trading Midjourney as just a tool for generating images with prompts you got from ChatGPT, it's time to shift gears because that approach is very suboptimal and leads to really bad quality images which does not match your vision and you get frustrated. It also means you are barely scratching the surface of its potential. But don't worry, that's exactly why I made this video. I'm going to guide you through the process of transforming Midjourney from a simple AI image generator to your ultimate creative collaborator. And the secret lies in mastering that art of control. With this simple yet powerful example, which I will walk you through in this video, from beginner to advanced prompting, I will show you how to seamlessly integrate Midjourney into your creative process, ensuring that what you envision is what you will create. So I recently got this question from someone that they're trying to create a specific photo shoot where they really want to have a specific fashion details. For example, the woman is standing in a desert and she's wearing ski goggles, right? Plus additionally, she wants to have a certain fashion outfit. And this was not possible even after multiple iterations and prompting. And I thought this was a perfect example to pick up and show you the exact process I walked through to overcome this challenge and to really create what I wanted based on these particular requirements. First step for you is whenever you're starting to prompt with Midjourney or any AI image generator, start with a simple prompt structure. Focus on the subject and the background, and then you can go on adding new additional keywords and style. So I started with photograph of a woman with ski goggles, followed by desert background, and I already leveraged a negative prompt over here. I think this is super important. Negative prompts, the right use of the negative prompts are very, very important. And so I added no snow, right? Use max one or, you know, uh, at maximum two, two negative prompts. Any more than that will not really work out for now. Why did I use negative prompt over here? It's because I have ski goggles and think of this because all of these AI image generators are trained with ton of images over the internet. And these images are usually tagged with specific keywords and the details of what's in the image. Usually the images on the internet that are tagged with ski goggles are usually have snow around it, right? People are wearing ski goggles because it's a winter or a snow uh, background. And this is exactly why I have leveraged a negative prompt saying no snow right? It's super important to keep that in mind. Use negative prompts whenever possible because it makes primary prompting so much more easier. So that was the first try I did and I wanted to see what I get out of it. And I tried the same prompt again just to make sure that I'm, I was getting some consistent results, all right? So I did get consistent results. So uh, I usually try twice the same prompt to see I'm still there or I'm deviating from my results. All right. So after that, I went on to add a few more details. I said, photograph of a woman wearing ski goggles. And now I leveraged prompt weight over here. I'm telling Mid Journey that I wanted to give the keyword ski goggles a much higher significance in the final output. And you do see that I'm getting pretty cool results where it's listening to my prompt and it's reproducing those ski goggles, which as you see on the original image did not really look much like ski goggles. It did have, it had more of this Mad Max kind of vibe, right? Something you wear in a desert, like, like a production, but here it does look like ski goggles. And that's because I gave it a prompt weight of two, right? The, the weight goes on from anything above one is um, giving it more significance. The default is one. And then I went on to add, hey, uh, does a background, now I added a few more details on what the woman should be wearing, right? So that was the challenge as well, to get her to wear those specific outfits. And then I leveraged golden hour over here. I used golden hour uh, as my lighting keyword and I kept the no snow, all right? So the addition that I did here, the most important thing uh, takeaway here is you can use prompt weights to get much closer to your vision. All right, so next thing I did is I tried to experiment a little bit with the weights because I thought uh, the weight of two was a little too heavy and uh, it was trying to focus more on uh, the ski goggles itself. So I reduced the weight to 1.5. And I also did an additional addition in my negative, negative prompt. I said, no winter. Now, why did I do that? It's because I did see over here in these images, there was no snow because I had the negative prompt, no snow, but I was getting uh, the woman 
with winter clothes on, right? So take for example over here, she's wearing a winter jacket, similar to over here, it looks like a winter jacket. I don't really want that. So I added an additional negative keyword, which is no winter. Because again, think about it, the way these AI image generators uh, are trained with the images on the internet and images with winter clothes on it are tagged winter clothes, right? So think of taking that complete data set out of from what it's going to generate. So giving it a tag like no winter is going to give us much better results where she's not wearing any winter clothes. And you see that's uh, clearly showing up in our final, final results. Now I upscaled one of those images, which uh, I really liked, which I thought very was very close to what I was looking for. Once I upscaled, I went on to create uh, zoom out 2x. Now, this is a strategy that you can follow. First, you can create a close-up shot just like over here of a person so that you can focus on that one single subject and the details on that subject instead of taking into account everything or adding full body image. Why not just focus on getting the, the features right? And then once you get that right, you can start zooming out and adding additional details in there. And I did the exact same thing. Once I got this right, I did a zoom out 2x and I uh, reached over here. So with this simple workflow, I could get these uh, amazing results and the client was happy with uh, one of these results and we could then take it to the next level by using other editing softwares, right? So uh, think of how you can leverage these steps in your own projects. So here is another great example which will show you the power of prompt crafting within Midjourney and manipulating images uh, going from there, right? Here the prompt is Fujifilm Pro 400H, so that's the film type. Usually I front load the prompt with either the style, the camera angle, or the film type because this is the this is the most important effects that I eventually want to get under control in my final image generation. So it's always good to front load your prompt with this. Followed by the, the subject along with some of the details. Now here again I have leveraged prompt weight on the ski goggles. Since it's a desert background and ski goggles in a desert background they are two contradictory keywords or visual style you don't really find these kind of images on the internet combined together, right? And since AI image generators have been trained on all of these images, even they cannot really connect the dots between these. So this is why it's very hard to get images where the concepts itself are contradicting each other, right? The visual elements are uh, contradicting each other. But I'm going to show you how to make that possible. So I first leverage here the, the prompt weight because I wanted to tell uh, Midjourney, I wanted to almost like command Midjourney that, hey, I want the ski goggles, give it the highest significance, right? And then I went on to describe uh, the outfit uh, of what she's wearing. Again, I used the lighting keyword, the golden hour, just to get that, that vibe going. And again, I leveraged the negative keyword. I always do this, it's, it's super important to leverage them. I used no snow and no winter. It gave me these wonderful results and as you realize, it's super challenging to create ski goggles when she's in a desert, right? Midjourney does not listen to you uh, so, so well. No matter how much you try to modify your prompts, it's, uh, it's impossible sometimes. But what you realize is I did get this image where her goggles or the glasses she's wearing looks very close to something that might, that we can engineer to looking like ski goggles and that's exactly what I'm looking for. Click on very region which is which is basically in painting in mid journey. So I can click on very region and what I can do over here is I can just mask this particular area of her goggles, right? Because this is the region we want to um, turn or re-engineer to looking much closer to ski goggles. And over here, I can then remove this entire prompt and just type ski goggles, right? And then hit enter. Now in painting is a super important feature, especially when you realize that some aspects of the images that you have generated are not uh, yet there or they're not right uh, and there are things out of context or what you are not requested in your prompts, right? Is not following your prompts. So instead of trying to modify the whole prompt, we will only pick those regions from the images which we can mask, like I just showed you, and then write in the prompt where what do we really want it to be replaced with, 
right? So I did exactly that and I got these variations and they look pretty cool. They are getting there, right? It's also trying to get those key goggles more visually consistent and coherent uh, along with the rest of the image out there. So I did like this first one. So I went and uh, upscaled that image and I have four different variations done of this as well. Again, this is a, more of a trial and error process. You gotta be open to creating variations, exploring with playing around with your prompts so that you might uh, hit upon one of the results that very, very close to your vision. This is not just with AI image generation, even in the actual creative work, actual production work, 90% of the re results that you put together are usually not used in your final version, right? 90% is thrown away and it's the same creative process that you have to walk through when you're using AI or AI image generation. So there you go. I have one of these images now, uh, which after ink painting is very, very close to what I'm looking for, right? And this is a perfect result for my case. And from here, once I have landed on uh, this final image uh, where I focused on the subject and getting those key goggles and having the desert background I've landed on this image and now from here I can go on and click zoom out 2x so that I can get rest of the scene being created right and uh, This is a perfect. Let's call it like a medium shot So the client uh, had a few more requirements when I showed this particular image and they had a specific outfit and a specific hat actually that was needed in this particular image right so to add these additional details what i did is i clicked on uh, very region again i use the in painting feature i can again mask this particular area right and i can type in i want a pink lightly embroidered cowboy hat right so you can provide specific keywords and instructions over here that just focus on that particular element that you want to add right in this particular case it's a hat which is of this particular description right so once i did that i have these wonderful results right so I, now i upscale the second one i really like that particular variation and there you go i have a wonderful image over here with the exact hat that my client was looking for right so this is how you can go on and manipulate your images now additionally the client wanted to have a specific outfit that she was wearing and i could do that as well i could just click on where region again so i could i could just do this um and yeah you can do it much more accurately i just wanted to show you an example and then prompt what is the outfit that i really require right so i can get more detailed about just about that particular aspect of her outfit and uh, I have these wonderful results. Uh, as you see, this the second image uh, works perfectly well. My client liked it. And uh, yeah, there you go. I have this particular image. And all I started was with trying to get the goggles on a woman with a desert in the background. I leveraged prompt weights in there to get it right. And then I used very region and in painting features and zoom out to get to the final image uh, that I'm looking for.